lovely people of God, I welcome you all to today's Laudate Dominum. I am Philomena Esi Esuman. Today is a special day, a spirit-filled and joyful evening at that. It hasn't been easy at all. We have come a long way in prayers, fasting, almsgiving amongst others. Then comes the Holy Week, the last week of the Christian season of Lent, a time of prayer and preparation towards this day, Easter, which began with Palm Sunday. The palm branches at Mass reminds us of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We read the Passion, the Gospel passage that describes the suffering and death of Jesus in his last days, the Triduum, which is the great three days. Then comes the evening mass of the Lord's Supper, which sees us reenact the washing of feet. Dear viewers, we are all part of the body of Christ, that is, through the gifts of the Eucharist. We are also reminded of the crucifixion and death of our Lord as we read the Passion and venerate the cross. Jesus Christ had to go through pain and death for our salvation. We then go on to celebrate the longest Mass in the year, which is the Easter Vigil. We light fire and candles to bring light into the darkness. Finally, this joyous day, Easter. We sing hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation, has risen. We sing hallelujah. Good has triumphed over evil. We sing hallelujah. Love has conquered death. What better way to sing hallelujah than, yes, laudate dominum. Today we have with us Magdona Kwa, our lady seat of wisdom chaplaincy, to assist us in singing hallelujah to our Lord and Savior. They will start by singing, the strife is all. Yours is the glory and then Christ the Lord is risen today. Stay tuned.
bit of wisdom chaplaincy used to have one choir, that is Pax Romana Choir, and a singing group, Living Waters, who took charge of the singing during masses and other liturgical celebrations. When the students were on vacation, however, no choir was in attendance to help in the liturgy and other church activities. Hence, a group of community members came together with the support of Dr. Eric Deborah Autry to form the community choir. The choir was officially outdoored as Madonna Choir with 45 members by the then chaplain, Monsignor James Robert Myers, on the 7th December 2014. The name Madonna is an Italian word which is a representation of Mary, either alone or with a child, Jesus. The first president of the choir was Professor Paul Hinsley Bua Basua with Dr. Deborah Autry and Dr. Mrs. Rita Holm Ajovi as the choir master and mistress respectively. Madonna Choir currently has a membership of 35 core members comprising lecturers, administrators, senior staff and past students of the university among others. The choir continues to give us I know that my Redeemer lives, which follows by thus joyous Easter tide, and then lo in the grave he lays. Be with us.
Lovely viewers, may I introduce Most Reverend Charles Gable Pamal Buckle, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, to give us his Easter message. After the message from the Archbishop, the choir will give us this set of anthems. He paid it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Stay tuned. My dearly beloved, we have had the opportunity of celebrating another Easter ceremony. One day, one of my brothers asked me, why did God allow Jesus to die in order to be appeased? Did God require the shedding of blood, the death of his only begotten son, so that he will be happy with us and forgive us? In fact, it set me thinking. And I had to tell my brother, no. God did not in any way at all require the shedding of blood. But if anything at all, God required the ultimate display of love in obedience. Yes, Easter is the greatest story of love. Love unlimited. Love divine. Yes, let me go through just a few passages in scripture. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, and I quote, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that anyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So that is why God gave us his only begotten Son. In truth, it's not his only begotten Son. God himself came from heaven out of love for you and me to become one like us in the incarnation. Again, John will say in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. So Jesus is actually God who has become flesh in our midst. And Jesus himself once again would tell his disciples, No greater love has anyone than to lay down his life for his friends. Listen very carefully. No greater love has anyone than to lay down his life for his friends. So Jesus is dying at Easter is the ultimate example of how much God loves you and God loves me. In fact, there is another beautiful passage which we read on Holy Thursday at the washing of the feet. And that is in John's Gospel again, chapter 13. Eh? Chapter 13, starting from verse 1. This is what it says. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. Listen. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. And then what follows is the fact that Jesus knew that among his apostles was Judas who would betray him, Simon Peter who would deny him, and the rest of the apostles who would abandon him. But out of love, he still went ahead, washed their feet. He still went ahead and invited them to share in his body and his blood. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it and said, this is my body. He took the cup, blessed it and said, this is my blood. And he says, do this in memory 
of me. The ultimate example of love. Dearly beloved, if you go back again into John chapter 13, especially verses 34 and 35, this is again what the scripture teaches us. After Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples, he told them, I give you a good example, you also wash one another's feet. Humble service. But in verse 34 and 35, listen to what Jesus tells you and me. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So God is love. God becomes Jesus Christ. Jesus is love. Jesus laid down his life for you and me. Jesus now gives us an example of love, service in humility, and ultimate self-sacrifice. So dearly beloved, this is what Easter is about. It's not that we have a God who is literally, you know, bloodthirsty, terrible to say, but rather God who so loved the world that he became one like us and ultimately gave us the greatest example of love, self-sacrifice. And he sends you and me out, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to also live that example of humble service and of love, serving others to the point of even self-sacrifice. I take this opportunity to say, if only we understood this message of Easter, I think the world would be a better place. Jesus is risen. He is the ultimate love for you and me. He invites you and me to love one another and so make the world a better place. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 He paid it all for me. He paid the price of sin. And as he did not owe, he paid it all. Jesus, dearest Savior, I 
Rabbim and Seraphim, Amor, Yos, Amor, Yos, Amen, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, 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 Amen, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Christa me yin owo hen boninti wo yen ayeyezen oni nende de wa sore nyemu enyi jebena nyame aye bia me henu into sore baby biara ewo de ida ojarun padu ni we fiaze wo ra ho ana ejinza ibezu hu na ma yen fa daw na yen ka adwonto ku yi hu mfa adwonto na asaw ngu hol christ a wa so re fe wu fu mi de minti adwonto fo na ba ma hen ndwuma ozizidi wa so sa mu bo jesus zinara na christ ezin kunyim ye basan ezin she biu ma kra hu What's a refuge of What's a refuge of
So 